Welcome to the final episode of Complex Numbers. Let's do it. Part five. Number five. Okay, let's talk about it. Pythagorean triples. You probably know some. Three, four, five. Um, another one is five, twelve, thirteen. Um, uh, I know one that a lot of people probably don't. It's gonna be uh, sixty, eleven, sixty-one. Now, the only reason why I know this is because of complex numbers. Here's why. So. I know that in graphing complex numbers, A plus BI, this side links A, this side links B, this is the square root of A squared plus B squared, right? So, what about if I multiply it by itself? And I square it, right? This is going to be um, a plus bi times a plus bi. Double distribute. You get a squared minus b squared plus 2ab times i. Okay? That's what you get. You can do it yourself, but... This is what you get out of it. This right here is the real part. The real. We write it like that. This right here is the imaginary part. I am. So the real part of this complex number is a squared minus b squared because it's not being multiplied by i. The imaginary part is the part that is being multiplied by i. Okay? So. Let's look at let's look at this a little further. So um so what? Well if you remember last time we went ahead and proved that absolute value of a plus bi times the absolute value of c plus di it's the same thing as the absolute value of a plus bi times absolute value of c plus di. Okay, let's expand on this. Absolute value of a plus bi times a plus bi is the absolute value of a plus bi, right? Times the absolute value of a plus bi, right? That's what that's what we came to the that's what the entire part of the last section was about. Okay? What does this mean? Well what's the absolute value of A plus BI? It's the square root of A squared plus B squared. Okay. So if I'm multiplying that by itself, it's going to be the square root a squared plus b squared times square root a squared plus b squared. Also, I made a mistake in the last episode. The property that um square root of a times square root of b equals square root of a, b is untrue if a or b are negative. If A and B are both negative. If they're both negative, if they're both in negative, they're both less than zero, then it does not apply. Okay? Not for complex numbers. It does work for complex numbers, but not for negative numbers. So, in this, we get 
a squared plus b squared because we're squaring it, right? Okay. Well, if a and b, if a and b are integers, are integers, right? What's this going to be? Like in general, it's going to be an integer. Right? This is still an integer. a squared plus b squared is an integer. So if I'm doing a plus b times a plus b, which is a squared minus b squared plus 2abi, this right here is an integer. This right here is an integer. So that means if I were to graph it, right? This is gonna be a plus bi times a plus bi, right? I'm going to have an a squared minus b squared by 2ab by a squared plus b squared right angled triangle, correct? And all of these, this is going to be an integer. This is going to be an integer. And this is going to be an integer. They're all going to be integers. So what am I saying here? Well, a Pythagorean triple is an integer, an integer, and an integer that are the sides of a right angle triangle. And I've just shown you that if this is a plus bi times an a plus bi complex number, this side length is going to be a squared minus b squared, an integer. This side length is going to be 2ab, an integer. This side length is going to be a squared plus b squared, an integer. This will always be a Pythagorean triple. So, 2ab, a squared minus b squared, and a squared plus b squared is a Pythagorean triple. Pythagorean uh, triple for all. Um, this is what that, that stands for for all. A and B that are integers. So what does this mean? Well, I can give you, so this is what we got out of it. This is always a Pythagorean triple. Basically, you give me an A and a B that are integers. These will all be integers in their Pythagorean triple. So, a equals 1, b equals 1, uh, b equals 2, flip that around, <laughs> 2 b equals 1, I forgot something, these have to be absolute values, not that one, that will always be positive, but because we're talking about distances here, it can't be negative. So, 2 times 2 times 1 is a 4, 2 squared Minus 1 squared is going to be 4 minus 1, 3. 2 squared plus 1 squared is 5. I've just shown you a 3, 4, 5 triangle. What about, I'm pretty sure I did a equals 5 and b, a equals 6 and b equals 5, right? Let's do that. Then I get 60, 6 squared, 36, minus 25 is going to be 11. And then 
36 plus 25 is going to be 61. Let's check that. I'm basically saying 60 squared plus 11 squared is going to be 60 plus 1 squared. That's basically saying 60 squared plus 11 squared is going to be 60 squared plus 2 times 60 squared, 120 plus 1 squared, 1. Cancel those out. It's basically saying 11 squared is 121, which is true. So this right here is also a Pythagorean triple. Another example, A equals 3 and B equals 7. Let's do that. Uh, three, 2 times 3 is 6 times 7 is 42. 7 squared minus 3 squared, because we're taking absolute value, is going to be 49 minus 9. It's going to be 40. And then we're going to do 9 plus 49, which is then going to be 58. Uh, I'm pretty sure you can divide everything by 2. So then you get 21, 10, and then um, 20, 28, uh, 29, right? So this is another one. So um, let's check this. This is going to be 21 squared plus 10 squared. has to be equal to 20 plus 9 Squares is going to be uh, 21 plus 8 squared. So 21 squared plus 10 squared is the same thing as 21 squared plus 2 times 8 times 21. 8, 21 is going to be 8, and then which is 168. And then multiplying that by 2, my god, give me 12, 13. Two and then add one, three, 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 six, adding eight squared, which is sixty four. Cross those out, you get one hundred. Oops, I did something wrong. Probably that. Eight times twenty one will be one hundred sixty eight times two is three thirty six. I'm an idiot. This is 20. It's going to be 20. It's going to be 400. That's going to be 20. This is then going to be equal to 3, 3, 6, plus 64, 400. Boom. This is also a Pythagorean triple. It will always be 1. There you go. That took way too long. Why did I, why did I spend so long on that?